Hello, how are you guys? Um, I hope you guys can hear me okay. It's been a little while since we did one of these. Let me know if things are working out all right in the live stream and you can hear me. I can't see any comments right now. Oh, there they are. Good morning. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, it's nice to see all you guys. Sorry, it's been a little while. Um, just let me know if you can hear me in the comments. And hi, Neil. Hi, Leslie, Ramzan, George, Maria. Oh, it's so good to be back with you guys. Um, yep, we had a little bit of time without any content. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But, you know, I want to draw as, want you guys at least to draw as much as possible. So, the, for, to start off with, um, could you guys draw those drawers on the left hand side? Just kind of get yourselves in the drawing mode. Oh, by the way, guys, before I forget, if this stream fails for some reason, as in if it gets removed, if it freezes, then probably my computer crashed, and then hopefully it'll be back up a few minutes later. Whereas if it says it's been removed by YouTube, it means it got flagged or whatever. So go then you can go to twitch.tv slash lovelifedrawing and I'll continue the stream over there. So that's twitch.tv slash lovelifedrawing. Never used Twitch before? You shouldn't have to make an account or anything. You should be able to just watch it at that link. But that's only if this thing goes down. So yeah, if you guys can draw those drawers <laughs> uh, on the left hand side um, just to get and it doesn't have to be a proper drawing but what we're talking about today is perspective and so don't use too much perspective technique to try and draw the drawers just try and draw them by eyeballing the different distances and stuff the measures the proportions and and all of that photos slightly wonky you can see the the verticals are not quite vertical it's kind of tilted a little bit so but other than that it should be okay um, I tried to take it with a lens that would roughly match what the human eye would see um, which is a whole other topic about distortion from photos but yeah if you guys can draw that um, I wanted to start off just by talk there's a lot of stuff I want to talk to you guys about I've been I've been um, studying so much and thinking so much about drawing. So one thing is why do we need to bother learning about perspective? And this is something we're going to talk about in our next few YouTube videos. And it's something that I've really been thinking a lot about um, because I don't want to waste anyone's time by going doing loads of exercises that are not useful. So I want to find the bits that are really super useful. Um, so one thing that uh, where I really needed the kind of perspective that we're going to be looking at today was this drawing or painting on the right. I'm trying to learn a little bit about illustration. And this is actually the view from my flat. And well, there's no one sitting on the roof, hopefully. I added that. But if you look at these windows, and you can hardly see them. I got, uh, but there's also windows on the other side. Look how narrow they are. When I tried to eyeball those, I did not get those the right width and it looked funny. Um, whereas I think having them about in perspective helped to make this thing have some depth. And then when I came to add this character on the roof, um, I, ne I didn't have a reference, so I needed to make up the figure from my imagination so I needed to draw a box for his pelvis um, I needed some perspective stuff again to try and put that character on the roof so it was super useful for drawing a scene even for the part where I was drawing the figure but we're gonna see later on um, we're gonna see later on that there are instances where you don't really need to worry about perspective technique too much. 
but so in this example here, I had a pose that was quite tricky, a figure drawing pose. And you can see that's a pro like during the process of drawing this figure. Um, you can see at the, at the top, I'm like a few minutes in, I needed some boxes in perspective to help me make sense of that one. I don't want to leave that one up too long because some people can't handle figure drawings. <laughs> so, um, let me have a look. By the way, guys, could someone just comment and let me know that we're still going? It's just that my wife is helping put my daughter down for a nap. So I'm monitoring this by myself. And if it goes down, I don't usually know. Um, so if you guys could put a comment just to reassure me. Cool. So <laughs> I might be a bit paranoid that it's gone down for some reason. So the other thing I wanted to mention, though, is that perspective is a tool. It's not something that you, like, it's wrong to draw without it. And I hope it's okay to show an image from this animated film, Song of the Sea. Uh, check this out, like, check out that little bottle, and then check out the plate next to it. Like, the line across the bottom of the bottle is straight. And then the um, outline of the plate, you know, we can see a lot of that top plane of the plate. It, they're, they're, the perspective rules here are not being... Let me try and draw on this picture so you can see what I'm talking about. Like if, if rules were being adhered to here, you know, the, the bottle would have something like that going on. And it does at the top, but not at the bottom. So that doesn't make sense. But it looks really cool. And they've leaned into that. I mean, look at that cake. There's, the perspective makes no sense. But I love the look of this. I think it looks fantastic. So, um, you know, I, I, I just, because I've been studying so much, I've read so many things where it's like construction, learning correct perspective and applying it through construction of everything is the correct way to draw. And it's like, there isn't a correct way to draw, but it, perspective is an important and powerful tool to learn and you can use it or not use it. And here they've played with it, and it looks really cool, in my opinion. And, and throughout the movie, the perspective makes sense sometimes and doesn't make sense other times. Um, and I love it. Like here, I think it makes sense, right? I think it roughly makes sense. Like those little seals in the background are smaller, right? Um, you know, the artists who made this movie almost certainly have really good perspective skills, but they just want to apply them when they want to apply them. Like, you know, this, maybe this seal here, uh, this seal here on the right, if I made it really as big as the one on the bottom left, say, without, so as if there was no perspective happening, suddenly that seal's too big. And it, and it almost looks like now it's the king of the seals, right? So here you, they wanted to use some perspective there to help it tell the story. None of these seals is like uh, the dominant primary one that we should be looking at. Um, and so they've made sure that they kind of feel all the same size and not too flat. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys on the right is this is what you guys are drawing from the front. So you can see it's like wider than it is tall. Um, and just also so you can, oh, actually I didn't have that extra picture. Oh yeah, so here, <laughs> this is with a different lens than the one that you guys are drawing. And it's from the same place. And you can see that the diagonals, like the diagonal along the bottom there, is really, really um, strong, right? So, is this going to work? Nope. So if I come in here, this diagonal, no, it's not working. 
What am I doing wrong? Aha. Okay, so this diagonal here, it's so much stronger. And the vanishing point is closer in because of the lens. And I don't want to go into super duper technical stuff here. I just want to say like, the you know, photos are different to what we see with our eyes. And some camera lenses will match the kind of perspective we'll see with our eyes and some won't. Um, and so it's not necessarily the case that your f camera is going to be perfect in capturing what you want in terms of perspective. The one on the left, I've tried to use a lens that's going to kind of match the perspective we're going to see. And I wanted to show you guys... Um, this was an attempt I did with a pen, eyeballing it as well, like you guys are doing now. And, you know, it looks okay. I didn't really like the way that it turned out for a few reasons, but in terms of the perspective, it's, it's, it, it doesn't look quite right. It looks okay, but it looks, it's not quite right. And um, you can see a drawing, little drawing of Maggie's head at the bottom, sleeping. Most of the drawings in my sketchbook are just Maggie. Um, and so I wanted to show you guys what I got wrong when I drew this, eyeballing it. So if I draw a cross across this plane here, that, sh that should give me this, the middle of those drawers. So if I go back to, oops, what am I done here? Yeah, so if I go back to this one, if I draw across, across it, you guys might know this already because we covered it in one of our tutorials. I draw a cross across these drawers, the middle, the cross goes through the middle, and same thing would happen in perspective. So the cross thing is quite useful. Um, and you can see that I got the middle too far across, and I kind of undid some of the perspective. I made the width of the drawers quite similar here and here, like you know, they should be getting narrower, right? This one should be wider, and they should be getting narrower. That's okay, I was just eyeballing it. Um, but it's good to know that I have that tendency. And what we're going to try and learn about today is how to get that right. It's my mum's awesome drawing. I want to get to that later. Okay, so... Here are those drawers, and I'm going to give you guys another minute to draw them out, sketch them out. Don't worry if it doesn't look good. Um, none of our drawings today are going to look good, we're just practicing. And then we're going to try and draw them again with, uh, with some perspective techniques. So I'm just going to get into the comments. Failed in filling in the five columns, I only fit in five. Yeah, yeah, I... I um, can totally see that happening. It's hard to just eyeball this stuff. I can't draw a straight line. Well, I mean, you're going to see me attempting in a second, and you'll see I'm not that great at it either. Um, some perspective seems not correct. I mean, converged in vanishing point, is it true? Which, which, you mean in the photo? I'm not sure what you mean or in real life. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna remove the picture on the left and now you can hopefully see me, see my hand there. So if I go in here, um, what I'm gonna go through today is not like a masterclass in perspective. We're just gonna try and sketch this thing using a little bit of perspective and try and keep it pretty practical, you know, rather than like really doing it perfectly. For one thing, I don't have enough space to do proper vanishing points here. Maybe you will, because uh, the vanishing points aren't that far off, far away from the picture, but I don't have space for that. So I'm going to have to kind of estimate those a little bit. But we are going to think about the horizon line, uh, some vanishing points. Let me bring those up because the, otherwise it might look like the green lines are. So I've got those green lines on there just for proportions. 
So that yellow line um, going through there is the vanishing point, uh, is the horizon line. And I'll explain how you can find that a bit later on. Um, so don't worry about that for now. For now, worry about the green lines. And the point of the green lines is they're the same length. And so you can see that uh, this from this angle, it's taller than it is wide. Because you can see that it goes off the side there. It's, it's too far. It goes too far off to the side because it's, it's taller than it is wide from this angle. And that's one of the other things I got wrong here. And it's just that thing where my brain distorted it because it couldn't believe that this thing, which I know is wider than it is tall, it didn't want to draw it that way. It didn't want to draw it taller than it is wide. So if we draw a, a vertical length, and then you can eyeball it or you can use some kind of measurement, we can... Maggie, be quiet, please. Good girl. Good girl. She's upset someone's outside. She thinks she's a guard dog. Um, so here I've got about the same width and height. And then I brought it in. Maggie, be quiet. Good girl. So I brought it in because it's not as wide as it is tall. Right? And it's, it kind of feels wrong. It feels wrong to do that. But uh, so that's going to be the bottom corner that's closest to me. And that's the top corner that's closest to me. All right, so you're just kind of making it a little bit less wide than it is tall. And then where should this corner be um, where I've got this green vertical line? Like how far in should it be? Well, it's about, it's gonna, this distance here is gonna fit, I measured it earlier, it's going to fit maybe th about three times into the... Here, let me draw this on here. So this is going to fit just over three times into the width of this. So, so far we're not really using any perspective stuff. We're just observing the proportions of this thing from, the, from our point of view. Oops. So... Maybe just, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. We just, it's not, that's not really what we're um, focused on today. What we're focused on today is trying to get the draws about right. So, you guys still with me? It's taller than it is wide, Breno. I know. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Some perspective stuff is crazy. Like, not the perspective's not crazy, but the way that our eyes distort perspective and make us draw it wrong is crazy. So I just want to split this vertical. This vertical is nice because it doesn't really have much perspective going on. We're just looking at it and it's not too tricky. Um, you know, the convergence is tricky and how wide things are is tricky. But this vertical length, we're just kind of looking at it and it's not too bad. So I just want to eyeball it, bringing up, you know, it's got this bottom bit here, this bit. So I just want to come up a little bit and maybe come down a little bit for the, the thing on the top. What's that called? Uh, the top, uh, the cover on the top of the drawers, this thing. So I just want to come down. So now I'm just dealing with this area. Because this is the tricky part with all these drawers. So I want to get to this plane, which I know is a rectangle, but it's I can't draw it as a rectangle because it's in perspective. It's gonna it's not gonna be like a rectangle. So anyway, now I have this bit of that. So that's cool. And it would be cool to split it in half and split it in half again. So it's into quarters. So what we could do is we could eyeball it. And this is what I mean about, I'm not trying to get super duper perfect with the perspective today. 
I hope if you're a prospective purist, I apologize. But just want to do it so you could quickly sketch it out, you know. So I've got this, and then I'll split it in half and split it in half again. So now I've got the start of this sort of these lines, this grid that goes between the drawers. Yeah. So the next thing I want to do is, okay, so I know that there's going to be a, a sort of vertical for the other end of the draw somewhere here, but I don't know where it's going to start and end or how tall it's going to be. But I can see the angle across the bottom of the drawers. So I can measure that and just try and bring that across. Because what I should really do is like find the vanishing point and draw through all the way to the vanishing point but I don't have enough space to get the vanishing point to draw it out. I can imagine it though off my page, you know. And then for the top thing, I could look at that angle and just try and estimate that as well. So it's more horizontal, the top thing. It's more strong angle on the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. All right. So how are we doing? You guys with me so far? Maria's checked her first drawing and actually got it right with the length width. That is awesome. That's cool. I mean, I think the more we do this stuff, the more intuitive it's going to be. And then the less we'll have to worry about it. It's kind of the similar with so many things we're drawing. So for the side plane, um, it's not really the focus for this exercise, but Again, we can just estimate that angle and estimate this one. This vanishing point's even further away. We're seeing a little bit more of this side plane. So the angles are going to be a little bit less sharp, you know? So we've got some kind of side plane. How's that looking? Is that looking okay? I don't know. Um, okay. But we've got something here. If I kind of imagine where the vanishing point is over off to the left, I might be able to sort of sketch in the, this line here as well. Um, I hope you guys are okay with me just talking about the horizon line and the vanishing point. Um, what, I, what I really mean is the horizon line is the level of your eyes and anything that's parallel to the ground, those lines are going to converge to a point on that horizon line somewhere. And so these lines on the top and bottom of these drawers are converging to a point on this yellow line here in the middle, because that is the eye level line. Basically, that was the level of my eyes, my camera, when I was taking the photo. So all the lines are going to kind of go off and converge to these to that horizon line. Um, we do have a couple of tutorials that I think came out really good on that. If you aren't sure, you can check it out after. But so now I want to put in the horizon line on my drawing. And I know that th if this is the bottom of the first row of drawers here, I could just kind of come up a little bit. And it's going to be like somewhere in there. If I was doing this properly, I would extend my, you know, I would either have come up with my vanishing point at the start and, and all of that, and then uh, come up with my horizon line, come up with my vanishing points, extending them across. I'm kind of working it backwards based on observing the proportions and the angles and then working it backwards. So... <laughs> Um, but so I'm going to have a, a horizon line, something like that, just above. So any lines above this are going to converge down towards this line, and anything below it's going to converge up to that line. Okay, you guys doing okay? Yeah, so Margaret says, invaluable if we ever want to do streetscapes. Absolutely. We're going to see how it's invaluable if you ever want to do two people in a scene. Um, and maybe they're at different depths in, in, in your picture, and you want them to make sense, like the size of them. 
Um, but we're also going to look at if you just go into a life drawing session and the, the, the model strikes up a pose, like there's a little bit of perspective you can use to make it feel more real, make it feel more 3D. Okay, but there's also a lot of, you know, you don't, there's a serious limit to the use of perspective techniques in figure drawing, so we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to bring up is... If you, I don't know if you can see those little purple dots. I've got one right in the middle, and I've got some in the corners. Um, over here, some little purple dots. So I want to find the middle. I want to kind of find those points. So there's some in the corners. Um, and I want to find the one in the middle. So what we can do, we looked at this a bit before, we can do a cross right through. Okay. And you could use a ruler to get this, do this better, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend trying to just use your mark making skills. It's all right if it's not, not quite right. We can just check like how are we doing so far. This is what I estimated my halfway mark to be here. If I estimate this the halfway along here, maybe it's like that. And now I know that the middle of this thing is there. If I draw a line through there, that's right through the middle of this, does it go off to roughly the same vanishing point as these lines seem to go? So how am I doing so far? I can just do a little check. Um, now, what we've covered so far, thinking about a vanishing point, you know, we kind of reverse engineered some of this stuff. If you were drawing from imagination, you would set your eye level first. You'd get your, figure out your vanishing points. You want both, either both your vanishing points off the page or one on the page and the other off the page. If you have both vanishing points on your page, they're, that's often too close and you'll get a real sort of wide angle lens feel, unless that's what you want. Um, but because we're drawing from life, we have the perspective in front of us and we want to use our understanding of perspective to help us observe a bit better. So that's what we're doing. That's like why we're re reverse engineering the perspective that we already have. This amount of perspective understanding is, I think, pretty much everything you need to know, but you need to be pretty comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable enough with it yet because all, <laughs> all I've ever done for drawing really is go to life drawing class or throw on some crocky cafe and just draw figures. Not drawing buildings enough and other things, but um, doing this kind of practice really helps, even if you find it a bit boring. So, um, but we also know, like, if we draw a vertical through there, like, that's, that's the middle of, let me bring that up, I think I've got that as well. Uh, that's like the, well, that's not quite the same. That's the line right down the middle of the front of the drawers. So I've got a lot here now. Um, the problem is that if I just uh, do a, another diagonal like this in each of these, I can get the midpoint on each of the quarters, which would roughly be, if you look on the reference, I'll draw it, it'll roughly be these points, right? And that's useful. Um, and then I could just kind of, you know, estimate, okay, where are the drawers? You know, because because what, what I really need to do is divide this into thirds because each half has three columns of drawers in. So how can I divide it, not just into half, but into another number? And that's the tricky thing. So I'm going to explain to you guys how to do that but I don't think you really need to know that, you know? I think that what we've got here, I'll take away the green ones because they're nothing to do with perspective. What we've got here, we've got a horizon line, we've got vanishing points, and we've divided the plane in half with a big cross. That, in my opinion, is most of what you need to be really good at. And then when you need to do something, that if, if you're drawing 
from life and you draw it if you want to draw like complex architecture or figure uh, vehicles especially if you want to make them up from your imagination you need more than this but i think that this is about it we're going to go one step further but if what i show you guys now is too confusing just forget it just try and remember this the eye level line is the level of your eyes or the eye level of the viewer's eyes who's looking in the picture then there's vanishing points and you can get an intuitive sense of where they are by drawing a lot from life and checking the angles um, and then you just build this intuitive sense of how where they sh where they tend to be um, and you can draw boxy things like buildings or cereal boxes and stuff and just build up your intuitive sense of where's the horizon line and where are the vanishing points and then if you want to find the halfway points, divide it in half. That is where most of the value is, I think, in learning perspective. Okay, so let's go for it. Let's divide it into thirds. Uh, Sherry says, wrong. Do you mean you got it wrong in your drawing or that I'm, everything I'm saying is nonsense? Um, let's divide this thing into thirds. Okay, what we're going to do, and this is a principle you can kind of apply, all right, I'm going to bring up the lines and don't freak out, so these are the lines I'm going to use, okay, <laughs> so what have I got here, I have the blue ones I actually already have in my drawing. So if I extend a horizontal across from this corner here, and I've got my horizon line, so it should be parallel to that. Now look at how bad my horizontal is. Okay. Uh, that's... I've got to get better at just doing verticals and horizontals. Um, I mean, I can already see there's something wrong in my sketch because that horizontal should be coming much lower. But anyway, I bring a horizontal across here. I've got my horizon line and I've got this line down the middle of the drawers. And so this is where they cross. Like this is the middle of the drawers and this is the horizon line, right? And for this, I actually can use any point on the horizon line. A lot of people say to use the vanishing point, but we didn't put the vanishing point on because we didn't have the space. And I actually tested this and it works wherever it, whichever point you use on the vanishing, on the horizon line. So don't worry about it too much. But I'm going with this one in the middle because then it makes it easier. So I've got a horizontal from the bottom corner, just like that. And now I've got this line down like that so that and then I, I can bring a line a diagonal through here and I can bring a diagonal through this corner as well through here oops that's not good okay this is coming out a bit wonky I hope you guys will forgive me for my wonky drawing okay now this length is going to end up roughly the same as this length. And the reason for that is in real life, this length is the same as this length. It's just gotten shorter because of perspective. And all I'm doing by bringing it to this horizontal is kind of like straightening it out. And the reason that I want to do that is it's way easier to deal with stuff when it's straight on to my eyes. So I'm going to bring it out to a horizontal like this. And then I'm going to divide the horizontal into uh, a third or thirds on each side, right, into six total columns, because that's what's going on in my drawers. It's kind of easier, like I'm just estimating, like that looks about the same, that looks about the same. And then I can draw diagonals back to that same point through these ones. And then where that crosses this line here, that's going to be the bottoms of my columns. 
Does that make sense? This is the bit where I was like, man, this might be uh, too much to go through. And if this bit doesn't make any sense to you, just forget it. Because the real thing is what I was saying before. Just draw a cross through it, you get half. If you want to get another half, do another cross, you know, in one of the quarters or whatever. Or just do a cross through that half and you'll find the halfway points. So don't worry about this. Um, but if you want to be able to sort of divide roughly into thirds or fifths or anything like that, you bring that, bring that line to a horizontal or if it's kind of going that way, a vertical. So that it, you kind of bring it out as if it's straight onto you. You divide that into thirds or divide that into fifths or sixths or whatever. And then you'll bring those diagonals back to the same point on the horizon and you'll find those those thirds. I, mean, I feel like that makes no sense. Anyway, that is good that that's the least important thing we're covering today. But that would be where your draws go. You see what I mean about <laughs> we're not doing pretty drawings. It's a total mess. Okay. Are you guys still with me, or have you all left because it's too much, it's too too ridiculous? Um, it might be simpler if you mirror those planes horizontally, says Peanut, instead of a vertical triangle. Um, so I don't know if you mean like mirroring them like you know, extending them across, but we didn't have any th we didn't have even one draw to extend across. So, if you eyeballed the first one, then you you might be able to ex like duplicate it across. But okay, so this line here, remember that's the horizon line. It's not the bottom of my drawers. Bottom of my drawers is a little bit below that. Um, and then that's where these drawers were. And then this is where these drawers were. They're all going off to the same vanishing point, And I kind of have the level of them because I divided this into quarters at the beginning. And then if I wanted to find the handles, the middle of the handles, I could draw a cross through each one and get the middle of them. Or I could draw a cross through one of them and then have a line across and then just guess where they are. You know, at this point, it's going to look reasonably OK and you can just crack on with your drawing. Um, and you would, wouldn't would want your drawing to have all these crazy lines and be this messy. Uh, if you're doing it digitally, you know, you could sketch them in real light and kind of get rid of them. You could put tracing paper on the top of this, you know, establish a grid or something. Uh, if it's digital, you could add another layer on the top. You know, you could do it with pencil and ink it or whatever. Um, or you could just practice this and get a good intuitive sense of it and then just sketch stuff without doing it. Um, whew, thanks for sticking with me through that, because it's a tricky one. We are going to move on to slightly more practical things. I will reiterate, I know I've said it so many times, but like, I feel like this is the extent of most perspective that you need. Something like that. And also just something I've realized is, so if I go back to that illustration I was working on, um, I noticed that my vertical, you know, I just, you, did you guys just see my horizontals weren't very nice here? Look at my verticals too on this window. Wait, how can I draw on that? Like, I'll draw a vertical line, and the window's on a total angle. And that wasn't on purpose, that's not some stylistic choice, that's just because my verticals are not good. So, getting good at like just drawing like nice horizontals and verticals, and then being able to draw a cross so that the lines go through the corners, you know, that's going to be real useful, because you don't want to get, cr I, I personally don't want to get crazy doing perspective, I just want to be able to to rough it out real quick. Um, all right.
yeah, ghosting through the middle for handles is helpful, says Sue. I agree, yeah, you could just ghost it because you don't want to cover it in a million lines. Okay. All right, yeah, Bruno says, you know, you can do that and it helps the brain unlearn. Yeah, you do this enough, you won't... I need to do it more and well, there's my, my attempt at this thing. I won't draw it like that anymore if I keep doing exercises like this because I won't kind of undo the perspective like I did here you know this is why I decided this exercise was really important because if I'm doing this to these drawers I'm doing it to figures it's just harder to see the picture of Maggie sleep in my whole sketchbook is pictures of Maggie um, and my kettle because every evening we curl up on the couch with Maggie and me and my wife drink some decaf tea. So, living the crazy life. So, I wanted to get more practical, especially, you know, we're on this channel, we're into, um, we're drawing uh, people, right? So, How's this going to apply to people? Well, we might want to draw people in a scene. So the first thing that you can look for in your scene is like, where's my eye level? In this case, where's the level of the camera? Um, and I don't. I think it's a little bit above the heads of these people. So let me go here. So this one, I think it's roughly. They've just the the, the photographers held it up to their own eyes. So it's going to be some. Ooh. Just get that there. So it's going to be roughly, you know, somewhere like this, maybe. Well, I don't know, something like that. And some people are shorter and some people are taller. But you can see that wherever they are in the picture plane, roughly speaking, their face is like on the same level. And we've talked about this on the channel before. But that is the horizon line, r roughly. Like we can't, I mean, if we really wanted to get it, we could draw some converging lines, like on these windows. Hopefully you guys are looking at the photo on the right hand side. And so then our horizon, they converge to that point there. You can see my horizontals are so awful. So it's, I guess it's something like that. Like on the same level as this guy's eyes. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, and so when you want to draw figures in a scene, you can figure out like, okay, there's the horizon line. People's eyes are going to roughly be in there, but I want some of them to be a bit shorter and I want some of them to be a bit taller, but this is roughly going to be what it is. And then if they are standing like on the same kind of line, we can converge the, their feet. We can bring their, f have a line going along their feet to the horizon line. And then we could have a line uh, like going along their hips or something to there and then I could sort of figure out we'll, we'll do this in a second in the drawing I could figure out the height of this person so that they make sense relative to this person and then I can just go across and make sure the height of this person is right relative to this person and then this person here like if you were drawing this scene you could be like well if he was standing he'd be like this because his eyes would be on that horizon line uh, so if he's standing, he's kind of he could, ooh, he kind of looks like that, and then I'll just make that size sitting, and then I figure out that scene using just horizon line and some vanishing points. So similarly here, I think we're looking down on their heads because as um, if you look at the people in the background, their heads are a little bit higher. So I feel like the horizon line might be like up here, somewhere like that, or maybe a little bit lower, I'm not sure. 
Um, and if you really wanted to find it, you could probably extend the lines of this box. You know, boxes are the, where perspective really makes a lot of sense. And then you could extend that off and find the horizon line. And then everyone's heads would kind of heads against feet. If they were the same height, they would sort of converge to that horizon line. So maybe we should do an example on the paper together. Okay. All right. So we're not going to draw this scene, but we're just going to make one up. So let's say we have a horizon line like this. So this is the level of our eyes just going across here. So we're just going to make something up now. So this is the level of our eyes. And, you know, let's say we're doing one point perspective, like, like this picture on the, on the right. And so maybe we have some sort of street or something. And we can draw some converging lines coming out of it. And maybe we can have some kind of building or something. Um, so if we were going to have a door, we would want the doorway to come up a little bit above that horizon line because let, let's imagine we're standing. So we know that everything that's on this line is the same as our height. And the door is going to have to be a bit taller than us for us to walk through it, you know? So that helps us to get a sense of the door. And we can um, also, you know, we know that someone the same height as us, if they're standing like we are, you know, they're, yeah, actually the door should be higher, shouldn't it? They might be something like that high. Um, if that's the size of the door. And then if I was to have a similar person over here, closer to us, you know, I might make them this high. But if I wanted a kid there, I would make, if I would figure out, okay, this is the height of an adult, so then a kid who is half the size of the adult would be like that, you know? Their eyes would be under the horizon line because their eyes are not as high up as my eyes are. You know, and I could have like a shop warning and the lines would converge to the same point and all that kind of stuff. Um, if I was going to draw trees, it's true that they're organic shapes and they can be different sizes. But, gen you know, you could start by having trees that kind of are all the same size going off, going back into the distance. And then you can just like vary them up a little bit, you know, um, that doesn't work, but yeah. So the next part is actually, let's just look at an example of this. Th so this is like just figuring stuff out for a scene. Let's look at an example on a picture where there's two people. So I thought I had one of those. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I don't have that one. Forget that. Let's look at a picture of an actual person and think about how the perspective might apply to them if we wanted to draw them. So shift in over to the right side and you guys can try and sketch this guy if you like. Um, okay, he's doing the splits, showing off. I would too if I could do it. Um, so for this guy, the perspective is going to make some sense because his pose is kind of straight and symmetrical and we're looking at it from a three-quarter view. So if I was to kind of draw a line through his toes, for example, um, I feel like our, the camera is maybe just a little bit below him. So the horizon line might be like something like that. And 
the lines like through the bottom of his chest, nipples through the shoulders, maybe even across the brow, they're all going to go off and converge somewhere over here to a vanishing point. If I was to kind of stretch things out, I think this pose would make some sense in terms of just actually measuring out, thinking about a vanishing point. So if I wanted to draw it, I don't think you would necessarily need to draw that, but if you want to right now and just quickly like sort of sketch it out, you could, and you could just think, okay, so his legs would be like that, and then, you know, his head would be here, and then his nipples are going to be on the converging lines, and then the line across his chest is going to do that, and his legs are going to be like that, you know, so you could do it that way. But I think m more than that, when you're drawing figures, you just kind of want to keep it in mind. Where's the ground plane? Where's the level of the eyes? And what's going to be converging? And a lot of poses aren't going to work like this. So when we were drawing the drawers, everything converged nicely off to the vanishing point. And when we drew a scene, things converged to the vanishing point because it was like a street scene. But when you start drawing figures, if it's unless it's something like this, it doesn't really work. So like this one, it should work, right? It definitely is going to work on the floorboards and, and the mat at the bottom. Um, like these are going to converge nicely to a horizon line, which might be something like that. And they'll, they'll converge nicely. And all the floorboards will, and the windows and stuff will, and all these man-made things will. And then her f the heels of her feet will as well. And that is really, really useful to make her feel like she's standing on the mat, standing on the ground. But you might think, okay, so her arms will as well. But they're not like we just don't we don't always hold everything perfectly vertical to the ground and those are the things that are gonna converge to the horizon line and her arms are not gonna you know do that and so just there's no point really trying to make figures i think make their lines all converge to the vanishing point i think you can get good at intuitive perspective and then try and apply your good sense of intuitive perspective to a figure. And use perspective to get the ground plane for sure, figure out your eye level, but don't try and build them up with properly gridded perspective, if that makes sense. So let me try and... Why don't we... Uh... Why don't we draw a figure? If a fig, if someone, w let's draw a figure and think about like what is really gonna converge nicely in a sort of predictable way. Would be you know those guys who stand. I don't know if non-British people would know this, but like the guys who stand at Buckingham Palace and they have those hats, the guards, right? And they just stand like straight, you know. So if we're looking at one of those guys from a three-quarter view and we kind of turn their head into a box, so you guys can draw this with me. You can draw a horizon line with a vanishing point, draw some lines coming off it, and we'll just try and, you know, we'll imagine our eyes are at like the level of his chest or something like that. And we'll just try and think about, like, he's going to be standing real straight and symmetrical. So everything's going to make sense. So his shoulders, they're going to be on an angle that go off to the vanishing point. The line across the bottom of his chest is going to do the same, you know? And the bottom of his rib cage is going to do the same thing. And then the bony bits across his pelvis are going to do the same. They're all going to go off to this vanishing point. And his knees, wherever his knees are going to end up, so he should be like, maybe we could put his crotch there. We can take that as the halfway point of him. So his feet will end up about this level. Can you guys see that? So we've got a box for his head. 
we've kind of got a line across his shoulders, we've got a line across the bottom of his chest, rib cage arch comes up to that line of the chest, it's about the same height as his chest coming down here, and a little bit below that the bony bits of his pelvis, V down to the crotch, and this height be the same down to his feet. So then his feet, like where his feet are, they're going to line up because he's standing so straight, you know, so nice and straight for us. And then wherever his knees are, they're going to be on those, on the vanishing points too. But how often is anyone standing like that? Not that often, you know. Their head's going to be tilted, their shoulders are going to be tilted, their pelvis is going to be tilted. So, it's a, it's a, you know, that's why it's like good to get an intuitive feel for this stuff. Really good for mapping out where figures would be in a scene, you know, like people standing and stuff. Um, but when it comes to just drawing a figure from life, I don't think you would map out all of this stuff. You might turn the figure into a bot, into some boxes, like I did back here. Uh, with these, I, I started with his rib cage as a box and his pelvis as a box. But I didn't think about which one. Oh, sorry. So his pelvis uh, and his rib cage I put into a box, but I didn't think about like their vanishing points. Um, I just thought of, I've just done all of that practice so I kind of have a feel for what a box would look like and then that helped me and actually even for a pose like this where it does all make sense in terms of vanishing points I still think you would probably just like kind of try and intuitively figure out the perspective knowing that it's gonna kind of converge you might make his um, I don't know, his rib cage into a box and stuff like that, but not necessarily worry about all of the vanishing points. You know, you just get intuitively good with boxes if you want to use boxes in a figure, if, if, if you need to figure out those volumes. But so the practice that we did with the drawers, that kind of thing, is going to be really useful for the intuition about perspective, breaking down our preconceptions, which those are the things, the distortions in our brain, the types of things which made me draw those draws like this. We want to break those down and get a better intuition. And then we don't need to do all the grids and stuff for the figures. Because we don't want to do figures like robots. We want to be thinking gesture and stuff. But if we've already done the hard work with perspective exercises, it'll be there in our eyes. Our perspective, uh, you know, preconceptions and distortions from our brain will be gone. And we can, if we have, if we have a tough foreshortened limb, we can intuitively turn it into a cylinder or a box or something if we need to. But generally, we'll be able to get reasonably good perspective without worrying about grids and vanishing points and stuff. At least that's what I think, that's my opinion on it. And we're going to put out more videos in the next few weeks about when and how much is it useful to turn figures into boxes and which bits of perspective are worth practicing and how we're going to have more about that so that you can more and more stuff about getting that 3D feeling, dealing with foreshortening, making sure the perspective is working with your figures um, without getting too obsessed and technical in the perspective, just keeping it real practical because ultimately we want to move back to gesture because gesture is the life, gesture is what's going to move people when they see the drawing. The construction stuff is going to make sure it feels structurally sound and has volume. Okay, guys. Oh, yeah, my mum's picture. I wanted to leave this to the end because it's a figure drawing. Um, it's on Instagram, guys. I wanted to show this for a couple of reasons. 
A little bit like Song of the Sea before, I wanted to show it because look at the form that she's got on here. I can tell you guys that she never turns, because I've seen so many things recently where it's like, you have to turn everything into a box, that is the correct way to draw. Well, I mean, she drew this and she never turns things into cylinders or boxes. She builds things up 2D in her mind, um, mostly from observation, and she doesn't think about perspective. Um, and it looks pretty 3D to me, you know? So that's why I'm real reluctant to just say, look, you have to do all this stuff on perspective and turn everything into boxes. But I do think that that's a useful thing. So we definitely want to go over it. I just mean that for figures, all she really thinks about most of the time is gesture. But she, she's been drawing for so long, you know? And I think it's going to fast forward our progress if we do do this perspective excess work. But remember that it is, it's subordinate to gesture. It's, gesture is the master. <laughs> um, but we do, even for figures, we do need to do this perspective work. Keeping in mind that it's just a tool. And we just want to do it so that we get an intuitive sense of it. At least that's my take on it. That's my opinion on it. And that's what we're going to be doing here on this channel for the next few weeks. Sorry that there was a little bit of time when I was uh, inactive. I mentioned in my email, like, I just went a bit crazy, like, <laughs> overthinking stuff. Because I just, I don't want to get, I want to present all the information. But I don't just want to say you have to do this and you have to do that. Unless I really think it's worth the time to do it. And so I really wanted to figure out, not just for this, but for all this other stuff, which bits do you need to know? Otherwise, it's going to get overwhelming. And so, like, this thing on the drawers, uh, where is it? I don't think you really need to know this thing we did, but you might. It's like on the borderline, but I really want to be selective about what, I put up how I explain it and I just got too obsessed with it at the end of the day it's better just to put stuff out rather than um, try and make it all exactly correct perfect the perfect amount of information um, so I'm gonna try and be less con worried about about stuff and just keep putting stuff out uh, and I hope you guys can feel the same way about your practice like if you can't get all this stuff perfect, don't worry, you just keep practicing it and it will come with time. It doesn't have to be perfect practice, it just has to be quantity practice. Quantity, not quality, you know. Um, I had so much fun with all you guys. There will be more stuff coming out on the channel, all about perspective, but you don't need to be like, um, oh man, this is going to be more and more and more perspective technique, because it's going to almost be less and less and less. Like we're going to try and bring it right down to the point where you don't even think about perspective because it's just there. It's just already there. Ah, I had so much fun with you guys. I missed doing this and I want to... S the live stream didn't go down. So I guess whoever's been flagging it doesn't mind if we draw some draws and do perspective. They just don't like it when we're drawing... <laughs> Maybe they don't like gesture drawing. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I love hanging out with all you guys, and I really appreciate it. So take care. And I'm reading all your comments right now. And um, yeah, I never know how to end these things. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye.